Okay, uh, thank you, Bumi, for the introduction. So uh, actually, this is going to be very uh, informal. It's a fireside chat for a reason. And I believe the reason why you guys are here is because you want to know more about how tech communities in Singapore are doing, the leaders, the experiences. And I think that's what we're here to, to learn from, right? Even for me, I, I already know Michael very well. Uh, for me, meeting Max for the first time, meeting Saloni for the first time. So that's interesting for me. Right. So, but really, just today, we're just going to be asking them a lot of questions and just time, uh, just to really spend, and then hopefully, y'all get something out of this. Okay. So, I think let's start. Right. Um. I'll, I I know already. Bumi did the introduction, but I think we want to know more about uh, who we are talking to here, right? And then they are especially on the community side, right? Like the experiences and uh, and what they do. So maybe maybe we we'll go one round with uh, with Max first. Oh, both. Okay. Okay, yeah, so uh, it's actually, okay, so it, my name is Max, so I'm a founder for Upskill Cycle, it's actually uh, to help people with disabilities as well as able individuals to break into tech. I've uh, been mostly doing a lot of uh, community work in the Python user group side. Uh, last year I was voted as president, not vice president, but yeah, but uh, mostly been doing a lot of um, by, by cons. You also have heard of a few uh, APEX that we have in Singapore. It's actually one of the things that I've done uh, in the organizing community side since I was in uni about, I think, six or seven years ago. Yeah, so, and now mostly helping out with Michael in the Junior Dev SG as well as Dev SG, a Telegram group that uh, we have to chit chat on tech. And yeah, that's about it uh, from my end. everyone, I am Saloni and I work at WISE, uh, previously known as TransferWISE. And I'm a software developer, so on the daily we do the usual software development stuff, production support, improving the features on the product itself. Uh, and on the side, I am also leading the Women Who Code Singapore Division, uh, where we are hosting many events for talks, events, workshops for the women community uh, to excel in tech. Uh, so yeah, uh, we can check us out on Meetup. Uh, that's where we host our events. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Michael. Uh, professionally, I'm a software engineer and I lead a team in GovTech working on the WorkPass uh, systems at Ministry of Manpower. Uh, so I lead a team of about 14 en software engineers and we, we're basically maintaining the website for uh, migrant domestic workers. Um, for, so on the side, uh, I'm a community builder. So basically I've been doing uh, community building since 2000, I've forgotten when. <laughs> so the first uh, the communities I've started in the past are things like PHP user group, the iOS Dev Scout, uh, more recently the Junior Dev Singapore, which is like a support group for uh, freshman software engineers. So if you're like a, a fresh graduate or mid-career switcher coming into tech, um, I would I would suggest you join our group <laughs> and find out more. And uh, I also started engineers.sg uh, so as a way of like documenting and recording all the, the tech events that's happening in Singapore. Yeah, so that's that's me. Okay, so I think... Uh, Okay, so I think you guys uh, know a little bit more about them. So I think I will just uh, throw the first question to Michael because he doesn't even remember when he started community building, but I do, and it was 2006, right? So that's a very long time. Mm. So I think my first question to him is, you know, uh, how do you even get started? Because that time was even a time when I think none of us, uh, I think com communities wasn't a big thing, especially tech com com communities back then. You know, so I just wanted to like figure out, you know, So um, when I first started in 2006, I think there was only like uh, a Java user group and perhaps in Singapore, because the tech, the tech community at the time was kind of small, um, not many software engineers uh, or people, or rather the government wasn't really pushing for software engineering as a thing. So there weren't many uh, Singaporean or Singapore based soft, uh, software engineers like myself. And uh, so I felt like, hey, you know, um, tech communities need to 
uh, folks in it. I was looking for like-minded people. So I was like, okay, since I'm doing PHP, I should probably try and find a community that's doing this. Even though there was already a Java user group and there's a Ruby brigade, which is like uh, back then, yes. Uh, now they're called Ruby SG. La. So yeah, so back then we went, so I was like, okay, there's, there's the community for Java, there's community for Ruby. I should, I should, there should be a community for PHP, right? Since a lot of people use PHP. So I looked around, they were actually, actually two defunct PHP user groups. Uh, so at the time I was like, okay, um, so since no one's doing this actively now, maybe I should try. Um, so this board, this desire to find like-minded folks also was born out of two things. Number one, uh, previously as a uh, evangelical Christian, I, I, I enjoy the idea of a cell group. So a cell group is a place where you can kind of like meet uh, uh, faith, uh, folks in the same religion and faithful, and we kind of like share and strengthen each other. So I felt that was a good thing that they had in, in the religious community. So I want to try and do something as well in like that in the tech community. And the other part that pushed me towards this was open source. The open source movement in, in even understand about open source, the more you share, the more you, you share to the world, the, the greater it is for the whole, the, I mean, it's, the more you get back, right? So. The idea of sharing an idea, and the idea of sharing as uh, your experiences and building the community up as a whole, just by g giving free stuff, right? I think that's that's a, that's a very important part of it. So these two uh, past experiences just came together, where I felt we should really try to do this and find like-minded folks. Uh. So that's how I started the PHP user group uh, as a way of like creating uh, that community. But unfortunately, the first meetup I had was like three, four people at Brewworks having beer. So it was like kind of a humble beginning. Um, but things got started really picking up when I did, uh, when PHP, or rather when Facebook started pushing out the PHP, uh, they have this, uh, Facebook, because Facebook, Facebook use PHP, right? So they did like a, um, uh, they have this API, which they just opened up their, their, their Facebook API for building games and stuff. Uh, so there were a lot of people who were very interested in how this API works and a lot of people were probably using PHP. So there, there, there's this, uh, E27, there's a group in Singapore which started a uh, Facebook developer garage which is kind of like an unofficial thing uh, to kind of like uh, get the community together building, uh, you know, apps in, in Facebook on Facebook API. So I was there and I gave out my name card. Hey, this is like PHP user group. Check us out. We just, I just created the Facebook group last uh, last last night and uh, <laughs> and the number of people just got started ballooning uh, and the number of member, members uh, in the community started ballooning. And like, okay, let's try and create an event, like, you know, meet up. So, you know, like how many people can, can, have, can turn out, right? So I didn't have a venue, I didn't have speakers, but I just created an event on Facebook and suddenly got 40, 50 people sign up for it. And I, oh, okay. Now I have a good problem. I <laughs> So, and I started asking around, hey, uh, does anyone have like, uh, topics to share. So I was like, okay, I, I, since I'm the leader of the group, I should probably share something. And then, but I still need, so I found one of my, uh, two of my friends who could like, talk a bit about uh, security in PHP. I talk about, I will talk about PHP 101, like how you, how you get started in PHP. And um, I was like, where do we find venues? At the time, there wasn't that like, a lot of like, companies who had space for this. So, uh, but schools had a lot of space. So I, I spoke to some, one of my friends at the uh, Ruby Brigade. And then, hey, you guys are holding meetups at SMU, right? So do, could I kind of like get in touch with someone at SMU that could do this for us? And they introduced me to the Object Oriented Programming S Society at SMU. <laughs> I'm not sure how many of you actually heard of that before. But yeah, they had, a, they had this thing group there and I was like, oh yeah, PHP is open, uh, OOP, right? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> You can write no OP. Uh, okay, so so yeah, they, they started to host us, and we and yeah, that was how we got really got started uh, all those years ago. So, yeah, uh, what's keeping me going is are those two things: finding like-minded individuals, being together, uh, sharing our sharing like-minded individuals coming together, sharing our ideas, and building up the community through, through like at open in the spirit of spirit of open source. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Sorry. Thanks, Michael. That that was a uh, yeah. That story I've not known before. Yes, and I don't think any, anyone here also pro pro probably knows that. So I think um, this yeah, I can't believe there was a Ruby brigade back then because I think that probably is a Ruby one point zero. But the good thing that I think that I picked up from all of that right was that um, at Brewworks three or four people with beer. Now that that is important. 
right? I think it's also the spirit for 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 any uh, groups in Singapore. Or right? it's not just about the content, but it's also about the networking, the community that you get out of it. And you know, from just what I heard from him, right, it was really just a lot of the. Um, uh, just uh, finding like-minded people gathering together and uh, I'm also a, a Christian so I understand where he's coming from and I believe like people from religious faiths also do have the same kind of same similar concepts lah, right so maybe uh, yeah um, maybe let's hear it from Saloni right um, you know a uh, woman uh, who could right and I think now you're the director yeah. right so just wondering what was the passion how do you get started and stuff like that yeah. Um, so I actually got involved in uh, tech ladies and girls in tech way before Women Who Code. So once I graduated from university uh, and my first job already I started feeling uh, a bit out of place because I used to be the only female in every team uh, that I would join. And yes, so that was one of the motivating factors for me to join uh, the existing tech ladies and girls in tech uh, communities that were already around. That's why I realized there are actually quite a, f quite a lot of female uh, programmers around. Uh, it's, it's just that we need a little bit more uh, push <laughs> and support from each other. So I actually started out with uh, coaching at for girls in tech for like um, for even from secondary school itself we used to teach uh, I forgot the name of the software uh, which we used to teach while loops if if such statements and stuff uh, then we progressed to teaching uh, react js uh, and and stuff at tech ladies there's like boot camps uh, so I would learn at work uh, and then I would just you know teach at all of these events uh, because I believe teaching is the best way to learn and uh, through all these uh, events I would meet a lot of other females uh, just like Michael said like-minded people uh, and to, to know that there are role models out there and uh, there are people out there uh, also in the same situation as me uh, is a very important thing for women in tech uh, so, uh, just last year, in 2021, actually, I uh, uh, opted in to be the director for Women Who Code. Women Who Code's mission is to empower women to excel in tech careers. Uh, and Women Who Code is actually a global organization. We exist in 57 other countries. So I just uh, lead, together with my co-director, uh, the Singapore division. So. Uh, we have we hold events to allow uh, women, not just women, everyone to excel in their professional careers. So we have uh, intro to cloud computing uh, for AWS and events like a lot of interviewing uh, rounds prep uh, going on, and not just in software development, other streams like data science, UI, UX. Uh, so yeah, we we are hosting all of these events, finding speakers all the time, uh, and even volunteers to help out run these events. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's how I got involved and how I am still remaining in it, because uh, yeah, so it is really nice to see all of these women excel like from non-software development careers to having a software development career and really liking the, the field itself. Sorry. So uh, I, I think um, I think that's a really interesting. Um, so maybe maybe you could tell the difference just a bit more between uh, tech ladies and women who code, because I, I hear that women who code is uh, is a global org organization, and of course there's a lot of paths, but enablement from from what I'm hearing also. So it's just the distinction between them, right? Yep. Uh, I do not really see a lot of difference. It is uh, still a co forum for women to come together f uh, in tech fields. Uh, but maybe uh, one thing that I do notice is uh, women who could are, is the events that we host are more for women who are already in tech to allow them to excel in their uh, careers. Uh, tech Ladies also has events and sessions for those uh, to in encourage more women to get into tech. 
So that's uh, one main difference that we see. But uh, overall, the vision is still the same. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, and I think just uh, one thing you mentioned about volunteers, right? How's the volunteering uh, with the group? How's the vibe? How's the spirit? Is there a lot of uh, uh, like people charging along with you? You know, uh, are, are they? What are they really driven by? Uh, yes, we do have. So in the past two years, uh, we were very online. We actually did not even meet up. But pre-COVID, we used to have uh, in-person events that used to be a lot more. Uh, real <laughs> like you would actually see the passion from all of these young ladies uh, who are like talking about the experiences to others who are uh, yeah basically uh, the, I feel like the, the whole thing comes from the same point where each of us see uh, ourselves in companies and organizations as the only woman in in the team so that's where uh, everyone's passion comes from uh, there are even a lot of men in our volunteer group who also would like to see more women in the in their teams. So uh, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Okay, thank you. So now uh, we have only asked uh, two of them. Let's go to Max <laughs> before he goes too cold, yeah. right? <laughs> so um, Max, uh, you are you you said you are the president, right? President of uh, uh, the Python user group. T tell us more about that. You know what's what's going on. What's going on in the Python, the Python user group space? And you mentioned a lot about uh, PyCon. Uh, I know uh, there was a lot of past PyCons in the past. I'm not too sure if there are still now. So it would be good to understand more. Sure. Um, so essentially, right? Uh, I have been mostly been doing a lot of PyCons as well as Python user group. So for this year onwards, right, we are actually looking at how do we uh, be self sufficient because all along. Uh, in a lot of user groups in Singapore, most of it is actually a uh, uh, volunteer basis. But we saw that actually it, in the in event that we want to actually run PyCon, we may not have the funds because we need to s source the funds for to run an event. Even something like this is cost a lot as well. So we also wanted to actually to try to consolidate from our end as well to see who are the actual uh, members in the group. Because we can, it, it, it's just a, just a uh, Brief search is about six thousand or more as well for for just a Python, but we didn't do a lot of uh, that requirement or actually checking. Okay, how many uh, members are actually in the society? Because for us, it's actually we are operating as a society. So as a society, we have voting rights as well as our own funds that we actually need to activate from our end as well to actually promote Python in general to or in other areas like data science um, and more towards the education or even helping out to. Um, do mentoring because we saw that there actually has been uh, areas that we can actually consider as well because of there's a lot of people there's a general awareness of using Python for um, for for data science cloud and various other things but there's not a lot of opportunities that we can see in terms of jobs how can we do referral jobs networking as well as mentorship for me myself when I came in I didn't have a mentor per se la. most of it is actually from YouTube and books that I, I from the community leaders that actually are in Python for my end is actually Django. So yeah. So mostly what we are looking at is actually how can we help in cultivating this uh, membership through new through our own new newsletters, uh, to send it relevant and high quality information or as as well as job opportunities for people like myself who wants to get a job using Python. Because Python can be used for a lot of things but uh, it's very hard, lah. So you need to have more referrals for the user group. That's what we're looking at. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, um, you were on the topic of uh, I think jobs, right? So um, I'm just opening up to the crowd because I I guess uh, like I used to know someone who's now in the US, um, who said that uh, all his job changes, right, have been through the community itself. That means he has been involved in the community. Every single job change is not because he applied for some somewhere else. It's because he actually, you know, he knew someone, someone knew he was good, and then things naturally happen. So I'm just wondering the same with, you know, like any of you, is that something that has happened in your life? Maybe with Michael, yes, I'm pretty sure it has, right? But uh, yeah, just opening up and just seeing if someone would want to answer on this question. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, not personally uh, itself. I, I I do apply for jobs, uh, but I do know someone uh, really close. Uh, she's a very good friend of mine. She actually started from a non uh, technical background. She joined one of our tech ladies boot camp, uh, where I was her coach. We built uh, for three months. We built a NGO website, full stack. So that's where she learned actual coding, and from there uh, she applied for like uh, local banks. And she's now currently working at a very reputable firm. So and now she's giving back to the community. Uh, where she started from. So she's now an assistant coach at the same uh, Tech Ladies Boot Camp. She's giving talks for our Women Who Code events on uh, Node.js, Express.js, uh, and, and stuff. So uh, that's one success story that's really close to me. And it came out from the community. So she's involved in the different, uh, even in Genius SG and Junior Dev SG. Uh, so yeah, like it's all born from the community and uh, it comes full circle back to the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for my end, right, uh, actually I was given some, uh, offered a few jobs opportunities as a de developer advocate in a few tech companies, in one tech companies, uh, a very famous one. But yeah, so I was actually referred uh, because of my ability in terms of community development work as well uh, but overall so far what I have is actually I believe is actually connecting with uh, people who actually are different in terms of your position because when I came in right well the first thing is like wow so many people that is I'm, I'm big, I was I just graduated from uni or I just a junior developer came in I'm actually standing on shoulders of giants meaning a lot of people who are actually very experienced from uh, example people from carousel uh, like the very high level one as uh, as well as somehow also CTOs in startups as well. So the reason why I joined is actually I literally like um, st standing on them la, because I, I, I get to uh, absorb their information on absorb what their perspective as well on what we should do for certain technology decisions or thinking of how could we help the people or in terms of developing developers to break into tech because that's not a lot of, uh, during that, I think for Michael case and many, many others case, uh, it might be a mid-career change for you and uh, you need to have a support ecosystem to be there to actually help you to become a developer, at, as a junior developer or probably succeed to become a senior as well. So just keeping to your own technology group may not be good, but actually uh, networking across pollination actually helps as well because you never know, uh, next year maybe someone when you're speaking in a tech event a conference or e or a workshop you might be hired because of what you're doing or what you're showing and people might like you i heard a few success cases like uh one person who actually went to sbg digital i think as well uh <laughs> yes with michael uh yeah through just actually talking about oh uh, hardware because he's a hardware engineer as well yeah okay, okay thank you um, I think you spoke about mentoring, you spoke about like speaking on, on giants and stuff like that. And I think the one thing that has actually been on my mind, right, is looking at, uh, I think like one, one, one of you all said before, like, you know, when it started out, there was no one to mentor. And I also felt the same. I felt when I went in industry, I was like, hmm, I'm not too sure what, what, what I'm supposed to do here, right? But the one thing that I'm seeing right now that I think is very interesting is junior devs, right? So, uh, I mean, I've been looking at the programs. I was like, oh, wow, actually, this is this is really creating something. This is this is the secret sauce we've been, been missing for quite a while like, in Singapore. So, so just wondering, you know, like the aim over there, the kind of stuff you're doing, right? So, um, we I started Junior Dev again as once again as a support group uh, for uh, freshmen software engineers. Uh, I felt what I saw at the time was um, there were a lot of coding schools. There were a lot of people doing mid-career switching. Uh, there were like people who just got laid off from their accounting job or law la uh, lawyers uh, who just decided to just switch into tech. So we did. We did. I did see a, a, a large number of uh, young and maybe even mid-career folks who were like, "Oh, I, I'm I'm new to this. I I just joined a coding boot camp." In Singapore, or, and we've, we've a lot of them come to meetups like JavaScript meetup, uh, Ruby meetup, and they were like, 
oh yeah yeah you know that there are everything is new to them and um that's why i felt like hey this, this is big this is such a big group coming up um who's helping to support this group and bring them to the next level because there's there's always a chasm there's a chasm between junior and senior which is the intermediate as in you move you, and we see a lot of folks who are junior developers if they're not mentored properly they just drop out or they just get disillusioned with the whole tech industry and because we see a lot of uh, and we also see we see engineers in uh, a lot of junior engineers we see a lot of quite a number of senior engineers but not enough like mid-level engineers who could like support and help even to graduate and develop into senior engineers and that's what's important for our ecosystem to continue to have that uh, ability to help junior engineers cross that chasm right from junior to senior how do you get the, how do they get there right so that's why i started uh, junior dev as a way of like bringing together all these people and giving them the resources and giving helping giving them giving them an opportunity to network with like-minded individuals of the same level and even future even potential future colleagues so you can find people who are, oh i i i uh, i like i like what you're doing can i can i get can, can i interview at your company or something like that I mean, the opportunities for to, to network and, and meet people is quite invaluable. And uh, when seeing all this, we also wanted to give them an opportunity to shine. So we created like a, a meetup group and we let people talk about their learning journeys, what they have learned, what the things they started working on, things they're hacking on. Um, I got the idea for Junior Dev not from Singapore actually. This is from Australia. There was a there's a there's a meetup group there called Junior Dev IO. I think we started out in Melbourne. So I saw uh, that on my friend on my good friend's page. I was like, hey, hey, dude, could you just introduce me to the founders? Let me try and bring this to Singapore. And uh, they graciously allow us to do that. They actually expanded to quite a few other places. Like Junior Dev IO has they are in Sydney. They are probably in New Zealand. Uh, uh, KL there's also one in KL right now. I don't know where he's whether the, the guy is here so yeah so we, we did we did um so we but there was only a guideline on how what, what you should have like events and we also they, they were also quite big on 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 diversity so they wanted to they, they told us that the, the one of the conditions of having this franchise is that our speaking uh, uh our speakers have to be like at least 50 percent diversity as in it has to be uh it ha so for so all these years we've been doing this uh, all our, all, every time we have a meetup we always be at least 50 percent women uh, or person of color, so it's like it's important for us to g let her, uh, help g give give them representation and uh, give them opportunity to shine. And I also see myself as a leader, help it to. It's important for me to also help them, like like some of the speakers. I will just I just encourage them, and because I'm always a lookout for speakers, right? So I always be look. Hey, you seem to have an interesting thing you're working on, or even uh, some of my colleagues. I'll just help, help, I encourage them. Hey, I think you should give a talk on DevOps because you were a DevOps engineer. Hey, you actually should give a talk about uh, quality engineering and uh, how they've been doing that in, in the workplace. Both are women, and they uh, they will be speaking. Uh, they have, one has spoken already, and the next one is coming up probably in March. Uh, on top of that, we also find uh, we did a survey with our junior developers. Like, hey, what what kind, what are activities would you like us to organize? Because like talks is one thing. What else can we do? Uh, and one of the things that they wanted us to do was a mentoring program, which we started. This is we're currently in our fourth batch. Well, it's pilot plus. Batch one, batch two, batch three, so it's a zero index. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's our we're into batch three, and then uh, we just started. We just started this year, and we'll be start uh, the first mentoring session will be in February, uh, first Feb. Yeah, so it's like a, in a in a group mentoring setup that you learn soft skills and and learn from the seniors like what you could you should, how you should how you should uh, act and behave and even work in 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 te te technology groups like this. Uh, in in a tech career, for example, uh, we also do like a coding uh, coding workshops. We do a code, in fact right now at AWS uh, we have a coding workshop. Uh, we call it Developers Gym. Like you know how now you code with Gym. Uh, I mean uh, Developers Code and Gym and never mind. So I, I get I guess you will know what I mean. But they, they do coding. So they do coding workshop today. There's a coding workshop and they'll be doing some refactoring, learning about how how to do refactoring with the gilded gilded rows uh, kata. So it's like the second second in the series they were doing on refactoring. So yeah, we, we give an opportunity to, to network through our meetups, to, to learn new skills from our developers gym and to even uh, build up their soft skills and abilities uh, in, in, a, in a mentoring kind of capacity. La. So that's what we're doing. Okay, we are almost uh, running out of time, but uh, I just have one last question. So uh, I I think uh, I've have this question from some folks who you know they feel very passionate about the community and uh, obviously they get inspired you know through 
programs they also get on board sometimes they want to volunteer uh, there are also some that they will know they want to volunteer but they there's also some in terms of maybe resistance or maybe some timidness or stuff like that right how how in your line of experiences like any one of you like maybe Saloni, how have you dealt with this kind of cases how have you encouraged them in, in that sense Um, yeah, there, there's definitely that hesitancy uh, because it could be a big group already and, you know, how do we enter such big groups? Uh, I would say you should try to DM one of us, maybe one of the organizing team or another volunteer in the team and they can slowly phase you in. Uh, like, it will start with, like, one hosting an event, not really speaking first, but yeah, hosting an event, and that's how you get the feel of how how it's done. And then slowly you can gain some confidence and then become a speaker or an assistant coach or um, a mentee, a mentor. There, uh, there are so many different kinds of uh, events and stuff happening. So yeah, but do, do not hesitate. Do just ping one of us uh, if, if you can. Yep. Okay. You want? Yeah, so for me, right, uh, ideally just come in for a meetup. We have a lot of meetups and usually we need speakers and you can just come in and speak or you can talk to us. We will just ask you to actually come for a meetup and talk to uh, talk to the people in the meetup. Uh. Um, they are all good friends or all are good people, so you don't need to worry about anything. So then, yeah, just chit chat and slowly, if you want to actually involve yourself, help out in organizing uh, conferences like Steve has been doing, as well as a few others. Lah, yeah. I, I, I was saying that you shouldn't point to me, you should be pointing to Michael. He's the prime example. Okay, anyway, folks, uh, that's all we have for today. Uh, we just want to make sure we're running on time. But really, thank you for our uh, three uh, our other fellow leaders who have actually made the time to come down here and to really share their experiences. You know, just uh, I've gained a lot of insights. I'm, I hope you guys also have done the same. And uh, I think they will, they will be around, right? So may, maybe not for Michael and me, but we, we will be running around because of this conference, right? Uh, but definitely, uh, just feel free to, you know, just meet them after this. Yeah, and with that, uh, yeah, thank you for just being here. Yeah. Thank you.